This chapter deals with reciprocal models. We use reciprocal functions and graphs to model real life problems. Now you might notice here that I've said that reciprocal functions are usually in the form y equals k over x. In previous videos, I was saying it was y equals a over x. Now it doesn't really matter whether it's k or a, either way, the letter at the top, or the pronumeral at the top, is there to just represent a number. Usually when we talk about reciprocal functions, we do use the letter k most often. So from now on, we'll use the letter k. Now when we think of reciprocal graphs, known as hyperbolas, we think of a graph similar to the one that we can see here. Now when we model it off real life problems, you'll find that they usually don't have two branches. In fact, all the ones that I've seen only have one branch. And it always seems to be the branch that we can see in the positive sector here, where we've got only positive values on our x and y axis. Anyway, let's get into our example, example one. It says the cost of hiring a bus is $2,000 for a day. Now the cost per person for hiring a bus decreases as you get more people to split the cost. And the reciprocal function that models the situation is C equals 2000 over N, where C represents the cost per person and N represents the number of people hiring the bus. So first of all, we'll complete question A. It says complete the table of values below and then draw the graph for C equals 2000 over N. So if we look at our first column here, we can see that N equals one, meaning there's only one person catching the bus. Now using the equation C equals 2000 over N, if N equals one, it's 2000 over one, 2000 divide one equals 2000, which makes sense. If only one person catches the bus, it's going to cost that person $2,000. Moving on to the next column, this time N is 5. So we're going to go C equals 2,000 over N or 2,000 over 5. Bringing up our calculator, 2,000 divided by 5 gives us 400. So if only 5 people catch the bus, it's going to cost them $400 each. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and complete this table of values. I'd like you to do the same and then check if you get the same answers as me. We've now finished our table of values and we want to plot these points and construct our graph. The top row on our table of values represents the number of people who caught the bus or M. This is going to be on our horizontal axis for our graph. We can see that we want to get as high as 50. I reckon the best way to do that is to skip squares and go up by tens. 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. The bottom row on our table of values is capital C, which represents the cost per person. That's going to be our vertical axis. We'll label this as C. Now this has to get as high as 2000. I think the best way to do that would be to skip squares and go up by 400 each time. So let's label these points. When N is 1, C is 2000. 1 would be very close to 0 and all the way up here at 2000. So we'll put a little mark here. Next, when n is 5, c is 400. That would go about here. When n is 10, c is 200. When n is 20, c is 100. When n is 30, c is 67. When n is 40, c is 50. And when n is 50, c is 40. You can see that we're getting much closer to the n axis, but never touching it, and of course, never going past it. 
you can see once we draw our curve, we get just one of the branches from our hyperbolic graph. Let's move on to some more questions. Question B. What is the cost per person to hire the bus when 46 people share the cost? Now there are two different ways we can answer this question. We can answer it by looking at the graph, or we can answer it by substituting 46 into our equation. If I was to use the graph, I would find this number 46 on my n-axis, which is roughly about here, then go up, meet the graph, and travel along to the left. Now, when I get to the vertical axis, I'm a bit confused here because I don't really know what number goes down there or what amount. The problem with using the graph is you can only get a rough estimate. So instead of using the graph, we'll use the equation and get an exact answer. Using the equation C equals 2000 over N, we'll replace the N with 46. Bringing up our calculator, 2000 divide 46 comes to $43.48. C equals $43.48, which is the cost that each person would have to pay to catch the bus. Now when you look at the graph where I've got the question mark, we now know that that's $43.48. But there's no way we could have come up with that just by observing the graph. Anyway, moving on to question C, it says how many people split the cost of the bus hire if the cost per person was approximately $77? So we take our equation C equals 2000 over N. If the cost per person is 77, that means C is 77. So C or 77 equals 2000 over N. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by N. This will cancel N at the bottom, which gives me 77N equals 2000. It's now a little easier to solve. I can now divide both sides by 77, which cancels the 77 and allows me to calculate n. 2000 divide 77 equals 25.974. So I'll round that up to 26 people. So if 26 people caught the bus, it would cost them approximately $77 each. We'll now move on to our final question, question D. You may notice that we have asymptotes at n equals 0 and c equals 0. By referring to the situation above where we are hiring a bus, explain why the graph approaches but never meets these asymptotes. So what are we talking about these asymptotes at n equals 0 and c equals 0? Well, let's first talk about where n equals 0. If we look at our n axis, it equals 0 all the way over here, which means that our asymptote passes through the point n equals 0. It goes all the way up here. The next asymptote occurs when c equals 0. If we look at our c axis, c equals 0 is all the way down here. So this time the asymptote goes all the way along the n axis. Now this makes sense because when we look at our graph, it always approaches and comes close to our asymptotes, but never touches them or crosses over them. So we are asked why our graph never meets these asymptotes, and we're asked to explain it by referring to the situation above, by referring to the hiring of the bus. Now if we look to the right and look at our graph, if it was possible that it could touch the n-axis, it would mean that the cost would come down to zero. Now that can't possibly happen. There is no way that you can cover the $2,000 daily fee if everyone is paying zero dollars. If we also look at the graph up here at the top, 
there's no way that it can touch the c-axis. If that was the case, then there would be zero people catching the bus. Who's going to pay the $2,000 if zero people are catching the bus? So what are we going to write down as our response to question D? We will say that if the graph could meet the N or C axes, then either the cost per person C becomes $0 or the number of people catching the bus becomes zero. This is not possible if the $2,000 fee is to be paid. It is possible for the graph to approach the N and C axes, but it cannot meet these axes. Anyway, that concludes our video on example one. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.